Well, we have AEW and NXT to talk about, and they did, in fact, do the angle to set up John Moxley, CM Punk at the pay per view on Sunday. And I thought angle. overall this show was excellent. And I thought the angle they did with Moxley and Punk was great. And well, uh, we'll, 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 we will see by the numbers, you know, how, how, you know, it was late to announce it. I thought that, uh, the punk thing was um it was different you know i mean it, it certainly wasn't what i expected it to be the one of the things that i thought was interesting was it a steel deserves a raise a steel did a great job in that a steel deserves a cut of this pay-per-view yeah a steel did a great job but you know like the they opened the show and jr basically says you know that he may have come back too soon or probably came back too soon and they talk about the foot injury and then when punk does the promo and when you know punk talks about his foot foot injury in detail and does mention that he got beat up in the match um, but when they announce the match like they don't he didn't talk about the foot injury or or anything you know it's like it was like it was a factor in the loss, but it seemed from the promos to be not a factor in the build for the rematch, which I thought was very interesting because um, I thought it would be a major part of it. But, you know, again, um, there's there's many different ways to do a good angle. It doesn't have to be the way I thought that they should do, which was to, you know, tell the story of the foot injury, um, which they didn't do. They did instead a... Uh, thing where punk was all depressed and and chris guy or a steel you know chris is his real name uh comes out and gives him the pep talk and he runs into this crowd and he's in the upper deck and he's saying you know it's chicago and we're tough in chicago and you know building it for the local crowd um so that was the way they did it um you know, they did it off of uh, Moxley came out and offered um, a uh, open contract, which he signed to for someone, you know, and he's talked about maybe we'll get someone from New Japan um, to face him for the championship on Sunday. And Chris Guy comes out and grabs the contract. So for an hour or whatever it was, it's like, I guess, since Chris, Chris had the contract and nobody else was apparently allowed to get the deal without going through Chris but no it's like nobody like wouldn't everyone in the roster be going to Chris and saying or something or saying I you know you know I mean it's it's an hour somebody should come forth right you got well to if guys. you look at it so there are a few things here first off Moxley when he came out just did a a total heel promo and he just, it was great. He goes, I think... Well, it was a heel promo for Chicago. Of but, course. Uh, he goes, I think this guy's carcass is still being mopped off the canvas in Cleveland, and everyone's booing. And he says, Punk used to be, call himself the, the modern 60-minute man, but sure wasn't true last week. I was good for 57 more minutes. What about you? And so he he, he talks about the, uh, the open contract, and when he drops into the ring, A still comes out, and even though we didn't see him for an hour, when when he comes out later, when CM Punk is doing his promo, he does say, you know, this is not what we talked about in the back. So I think the storyline was he took the contract to the back and him and Punk went into a room and locked the door and discussed this. And that's why nobody could just go up to him and, and get the contract. But Punk's they need, promo... They need, if that's the case, they needed to show him going into a room and locking the door because... Everybody that watched this show was going like, why didn't anybody else do this? I'm not, you know, I mean, it doesn't, in a sense, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's like, this was the match that they were going to do and this is the match they needed to do. And I mean, I've seen people go like, it makes no sense to do this match. And it's like, people are like, I, it's, it's so weird to me because I, I don't think people understand what professional wrestling is. And this is the perfect example of it. What makes sense is what the public wants to see the most. And that would be whether it's boxing, whether it's kickboxing, whether it's MMA, whether it's professional wrestling. When you have a big show, the job of the promoter is to 
do the match that more people want to see than any other match. Now, if you say this doesn't make sense, you have to come up. The, you have a pay-per-view on Sunday. The only way this doesn't make sense is if you can come up with a match that will draw more money and garner more interest than this match. And if you can, then in fact, inherently, this match doesn't make sense. If you can't, it makes sense. The idea that because he lost, well, you know what? In um, He was a champion and he lost. For a 100 million years of professional wrestling, when the champion lost, he would get an automatic rematch. So in historical wrestling, even though it was a, a three-minute squash match, by the rules of old wrestling, in almost every case, he would get the rematch. Now, in modern wrestling, which is the Tony Khan vision of this, influenced by UFC that does not do automatic rematches all the time, but does when it makes the most sense economically to do it, you could say, well, he lost in a one-sided fashion, so therefore he should not get a match. However, um, Amanda Nunes, in fact, lost cleanly, you know, finished, and got an immediate rematch because of all the op opponents that Juliana Pena could face the one that would draw the most public interest and the most money is Amanda Nunes. So, in fact, in that situation, they did do a rematch right away. They don't always do it. They will do it if it will make them the most money. Well, sure, but in, in all of these cases, what's different here is in storyline, John Moxley said, I got a pay-per-view Sunday. I need an opponent. I beat this guy. Here's an open contract. And so if it's an open contract, CM Punk signs it, he can get a rematch. And the other thing that he said, by the way, well, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not even I'm not even concerned about that because obviously, you know, you had to do a storyline to get to the match. I'm just saying people who are saying that it makes no sense to do the match. It's like I do not understand people who are they look too much into this. It is not a complicated thing. You book what you think will draw money. That is the only thing that you do when you are booking a major pay-per-view. What is the match that the people want to see the most? And if you can come up with a match, if, if you can come up with a match that is possible, like if you were just sit here and go, okay, what is going to draw more money in Chicago? Well, Chicago doesn't matter because it's, going to, it's you know, whatever. It's Most of the tickets are sold. What is going to draw more money on a pay-per-view? Is it going to be um, John Moxley against Adam Page? Is it going to be John Moxley against who? Darby Allen, Sting, whatever. Name the guy. Tanahashi rematch. Um, you know, Jay White, whatever. That was not even on the card. Will Ospreay. What is going to draw? I mean, what is going to draw the most money on a show this week when the goal is to draw the most money? And the answer is CM Punk. So I've been reading these people telling me about how this makes no sense using a certain type of, you know, rules that have never been used in wrestling, boxing or anything. It's like, well, but he just lost. And it's like they do, you know, he was the champion and he just lost. So in that sense, it does make sense. Yeah, he lost quick. How can you believe after, you know, he uh, he got beat so quickly and so one sided how can you believe that he could win, you know, a rematch right away? And it's like um, George St. Pierre in real life got beat and every bit as bad by Matt Sarah. OK, and um, George St. Pierre got a rematch. I mean, granted, he had to win. He, he didn't get an immediate rematch, but um, that's that, that. But that was due to injuries. He would have had an immediate rematch if it wasn't for the injuries. And. Um, and in fact, he destroyed Matt Sarah in the rematch, even though he lost the first match. Now, I know some people will go, well, you know, it's not realistic because of the injury. And, you know, that's why I thought they would do a storyline that, that, that involved the injury. And they really didn't. But, well, they, you know. they kind of, it was very weird when he did the promo because he said, he well, said, he, talked about he, the said the, he said, the, my foot is 100%, but it's a different 100%. Meaning, like, now that it's been surgically repaired, it will never be like it used to be. <laughs> Which, to me, means it's not 100%, but that's what he said. And then he, he said, he, I'm not said, sure it's ready. Yeah, so he, he did said, say that in his promo, that he wasn't sure that his foot was ready. So you can't tell that story at the pay-per-view. 
it was just weird how he he worded it. It's a hundred percent, but it's not the same one hundred percent. And I'm not sure it's ready. And so he's sad and he's practically crying and he's actually getting some booze because he's not just gonna take this match. That's when A Steel comes down to the ring and he says, you know, you didn't let the fans down, you didn't let your family down, you didn't leave anybody down. You know, I trained you and I didn't train you to do this and he actually dropped an F bomb on live television. And he fired up CM Punk, and then CM Punk got his smile back, and he does this promo about the day he was born, he was blue in the face because the cord was wrapped around his neck. They'd been trying to kill him since day one, and John Moxley wasn't man enough to be the guy to do it. And he goes into the crowd with all... The people are now going crazy for the guy. And uh, when he first came out... I mean, they were into him, but there were there were hecklers. There was some guy chanting about Colt Cabana, which caused Punk to stop his promo and call him a fat ass that had never been laid, which he later then said, I probably shouldn't have said that. He probably shouldn't have. That wasn't... I mean, he should just ignore it. But man, after, after Ace Steel fired him up and after he fired up his promo, I mean, this place was rocking for this guy. And he signed the, the contract, and I thought overall it was... It was excellent what they did to set this thing up. And, you know, a lot of people, uh, you know, last week, ah, how are you going to make me want to care? How are you gonna make me? Well, I think they made a lot of people care with the they angle did they, prom- did. they did. They did good promos. And that's the point. They did good promos. I thought, um, I mean, I thought when it was all said and done, it was effective, you know. I mean, um, how effective? We'll, you know, we'll find out next week how effective. Uh, but it's, um, you know, I've seen... Uh, of course, there's always better, but, uh, you know, Moxley's promos were very, very good. Punk's promo, once he got fired up, was very, very good. So, um, you know, now it's just time for the show. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.